Welcome to the Rika part of the Talk City team. Just about to start with our live webinar of Hansi University of Applied Science. We have the pleasure to have with us Inge and Anna. Inge is an alumna at ANSI, but she's currently the National Communication Manager. And we have Anna, she's a student at Hansi University. So they will tell us everything about this um, university. Drop all of your questions into the Q&A box that you find in the Zoom window. We will be, have a dedicated time for all of your questions at the end, but we also have Kasha from the admission team who will be answering live to all of the questions more related to the admission process. Inge, I leave you the floor and thank you so much. Thank you, Federica, for your nice introduction. Welcome, everyone. We are Hansa University of Applied Sciences, and we're excited to host today's webinar for you. We hope to share some nice information about our university with you today. And don't forget, as Federica already mentioned, you can ask us questions at any time using the chat. Our colleague Ekaterina, who's very experienced and knows everything about Hansa, will be there answering chat messages. So let's start off by introducing ourselves a little bit. Uh, so my name is Inge. I am from the Netherlands and I work at Hans's marketing and communication department as an international communication manager. And I am also a graduate of Hans, as I also studied international communication here. Uh, so those of you who are interested in communication, you're in luck today. You have some people who went through the program. Uh, I chose the international program for a clear reason, which is why I've always been interested in getting to know other cultures, working with people from all over the world, and it's been great to get to know so many different people. And this is nice for you to know as well. If you choose to study at Hanze, you don't only get to meet people from all over the world, but of course you also get to meet a lot of Dutch people who are very interested in getting to know you and to help you during your first months here. Uh, another fact about me is that I speak and understand three languages fluently, being Dutch, English, and also Spanish, because I studied in Spain for a while, while studying at Hanze. So if you have any questions in Spanish, feel free to put them in the chat as well, so uh, we can answer those in the end as well. Uh, but I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a bit. I am joined today, very excitedly, by one of our current students, Anna. Anna, could you please introduce yourself as well? Yes, uh, thank you very much. And once again, welcome everyone to this webinar. Uh, you will get your answers to your questions here, and we are very excited to tell you all about Hansa. Uh, my name is Anna. I'm actually a student ambassador at Hansa US and a second year student of International Communication Program. I came to the Netherlands all the way from Moscow, Russia. And well, why did I do this? Uh, because I came to this completely different country to totally different education culture, because I wanted to have a much broader experience than just going to my local university. And at Hansa, I got all of that and more. I got the opportunity to not only study in English, but also to get to know a different culture, to get out of my comfort zone, push myself and experience international and dynamic workspace. Thank you so much, Anna. Both of us are very excited to tell you more about our experience with studying in the Netherlands and at Hansa specifically. Uh, so this is what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, we'll be doing a Q&A at the end, but as I said, you can also send in your questions at any time for them to be answered already. So let's start off with some general information about Hansa. Hansa UAS was founded as early as 1798, making it the oldest university of applied sciences in the Netherlands. And next to that, we're also the largest in the northern part of the Netherlands in terms of amounts of students, as well as the variety in study programs. Because we offer programs in many different study domains, such as arts and music, health, business, communication, engineering, and so on. Next to that, we also have our own research centers and centers of expertise, which are researching topics related to our study programs. We are a university of applied sciences. That means that we don't just teach you theory, but we also teach you how to do applied research. And next to that, we teach you skills and how to apply knowledge to real life situations. Through, for example, project work, which we'll also talk a lot about again later, uh, and mandatory internships, we challenge you to act as a professional. Uh, all our bachelor's programs uh, uh, include work experience or internships during which you can work at a real company for about half a year 
and have the opportunity not only to put skills you've learned into practice, but also to make meaningful connections that will benefit you later when you want to find, find a job after graduation. But we'll go a little bit more in depth, of course, about that later. Uh, lastly, we are proud to be home to a very international student body with students coming from over 115 nationalities. There's a real international community at Hansa and we really value and appreciate the international atmosphere within our education. And as a student, you don't just have the opportunity to make friends from all over the world, but also to learn from each other, to tackle intercultural differences and to grow as a person. Time to show you a little bit about what our campus looks like. Our campus is called Zernike, our main campus, and it's located in the northern part of the city of Groningen. It's a very modern and green campus. We have lecture halls, project rooms, study facilities, of course, such as libraries, but also some cafes, restaurants, shops, and sports facilities, such as a beach volley court and also a swimming pool. Uh, next to that, we also have buildings spread over multiple locations in the city. Uh, this beautiful building, for example, belongs to Minerva, our art academy, and is located right in the city center. Uh, and if you indeed will study uh, art or design, for example, you will study, for example, in this building. Hans is home, as I said, to many international programs. We're quite a big university, but we're organized in such a way that our programs are divided into various schools, which are basically smaller units. And the reason why we organize ourselves this way is that you can benefit from the advantages of studying in a big university, for example, in terms of possibilities for development, learning languages, study abroad, etc. But you will still not be a number and be part of something smaller. Uh, this list, as you can see on the screen, it shows our bachelor's programs. As you can see, we have programs in these five domains, arts, business, communication, engineering, and health. Uh, most programs last four years, our bachelor's programs, and a few, as you can see on the slide as well, last three years. Next step, we also offer master's programs. Uh, these programs are offered in similar domains. Uh, as you can see, we have quite a big portfolio, so I would say there's something suitable for everyone. So what can you expect from studying at Hansa? Well, I can tell you all about it, but of course, it's much better to hear it from a current student. So Anna, I'm sure the, our other audience is interested in hearing all about your experiences. Yeah, of course, and I'd love to share it. So uh, as you can see on the slide, you can expect quite a lot from studying at Hansa. First, you would have to get out of your comfort zone, and this is something you have to be ready for and excited for, of course. Getting out of your comfort zone means not only moving abroad and getting used to living and studying in a different environment. Uh, it also means that there will be a different education culture, which will make the environment more dynamic and interesting. For me personally, it was challenging enough to leave my home country and the way of life I was used to, but I also had a fully different education atmosphere to look forward to. Every program at Hansa is actually designed so you can push yourself and grow personally and professionally. You're encouraged to tap into your own skills, abilities and interests. You are given the freedom to choose what to improve in yourself. In the end of the first year, I could compare myself with who I was in the beginning and I saw very positive progress. I started feeling more confident and more of a professional. But what actually contributes to that? First of all, of course, it's sharing and learning from each other, which happens usually in project groups. Here at Hansa, working in international project groups is the core of learning. Project is the key subject in all programs during which you can apply all the theory and skills that you've learned. Uh, Usually you do this through completing a real life case for a real client. So to solve the client's problem, you are put in project groups of four or five students from different nationalities. For example, I worked with students from Germany, Spain, Turkey, and I'm sure Inge has much more examples. So together you research the problem and make recommendations for a client, which they can actually implement. But we will tell you a bit about that later. Um, Sometimes uh, when you work in project groups, uh, you can learn very important skills which can help you develop your competencies. You learn to delegate tasks and trust in your team members, help each other and divide the workload according to your own skills. Uh, 
Hans actually uses a special method for that with students being able to organize their work themselves so that they could work more effectively. So everyone in the group should try to be very motivated and involved. Sometimes, of course, it can be challenging. Not everyone has the same working standards and sometimes not everyone puts enough effort, but it is completely okay. You just have to be honest and transparent with your group members and you have to communicate about any difficulties that you experience, which can stem from personal differences or cultural differences. Most of the time, after a good talk, most issues are resolved. And if not, sometimes students can leave their groups, just like in a professional setting. But just as a general tip, try to be enthusiastic, proactive, open-minded, and don't forget to have fun and be yourself. This will bring your group closer. As for the professional setting that I mentioned, it is also crucial at Hansa. From day one, you are treated as the young professional. That means that you already start developing your career. You expand your network through working with real clients uh, and getting to know many, many professionals in your field. And also Hansa gives you a great opportunity to get working experience during internships, which we will tell you about today as well. But this also means that your ideas are valued and heard, and you have freedom to make and justify your decisions. So your own motivation and your train of thought is very important at Hansa. This also translates to lectures being coaching rather than supervising. There is not much of a right or wrong answer, and there is not much praising. Most of the times when you ask a question to your teacher, the teacher will ask you back, what do you think? So you can have discussions and argue with your lectures, pitch your own ideas, so you feel equal with your teacher, and the distance between lectures and students is actually very, very short. For me, it was very unusual at first because I didn't expect to get this much freedom, but in the end, I could explore my own creativity, my strengths and skills, which gave a boost to my professional confidence. Apart from lectures, in the first year, you will meet your academic advisors. They will be there to help you with your study progress and some questions relating to work. Uh, if you have any concerns, they will be there to guide you, to help you and offer very important advice. With your academic advisors, you will talk about your personal and professional development, and he or she will help you along the way. I met with my academic counselor every block, and we discussed some improvement points that I should consider or explored my professional possibilities for the future. And of course, it is important to remember that here at Hanse, you will share your talent to make the world a better place. As I mentioned before, in all study programs, you will do projects for real clients who can implement your findings, so you are already making a difference. I actually prepared a few examples of my projects for you to show you how it actually works. As an international communication student, I had an opportunity to create campaigns, social media content and media plans for different clients. For example, last year, the University of Groningen requested help with their social media. Our class had a meeting with a client where she explained her problem and we kept in constant contact while we were doing the project. After it was done, she took the students' recommendations to heart and actually posted some of the content on her social media and on the website. After the project is finished, I still keep in contact with her on LinkedIn and I actually asked her to participate in another one of my projects. This next project gave us a lot of freedom. Our teachers encouraged us to research any profession in the communication, as you can see on the right. Uh, for example, PR, event management, or content creation. So we would know what the sphere is about and whether we would like to work in it. For that, we had multiple interviews with different professionals, including my previous client. We not only got answers to our questions about communication professions, but strengthened our networks, which would help us build our careers. Right now, my group and I are in the midst of creating a campaign for entrance, a professorship at Hanse, which Inge mentioned before, which focuses on the transition to clean, renewable energy, which would help to build a sustainable society. We are helping entrants to raise awareness of the issue and encourage people to use energy wisely. In this way, we do not only make a difference in the communication field, but also try to change the world for the better. Thank you so much, Anna. Your examples make me miss being a communication student. So nice. All right, so uh, time to dive in another topic related to uh, education, which is our educational system. Uh, let's explain a little bit how it works, because we receive quite some questions about it. 
uh, we use the commonly used ECTS system to express study load. Each study year covers 60 ECTS, and one ECTS stands for approximately 28 hours of study. Then, every uh, study year is divided into two semesters and into four blocks of 15 credits. Uh, then also every block, as Anna also mentioned, she met with her academic advisor every block. Every block lasts approximately seven weeks. And then at the end of every block, you'll have a week or two of exams. Uh, in this way, as the exams are spread over the year, you'll find that the exams are smaller than what you might encounter at other universities. I personally found that quite nice because that leaves smaller amounts of uh, like study material that you have to study at once um, compared to you know having to know everything at once. Uh, what's important to remember is that during the first year, you have to obtain at least 48 out of 60 credits. And this is very important because if you don't obtain 48 credits, you have to leave the program. You can transfer to another program within Hanze, all fine, but you can't study your current program. Of course, if there are circumstances that influence your study progress, it can be anything, exceptions can be made, but normally we, you really have to step up your game from day one and take your program seriously. At Hansa, you'll encounter that various ways of testing your knowledge are used. So of course we have traditional exams, but you also do projects as Anna explained, presentations of these projects, individual reports, etc. depending a little bit of course on which study program you're uh, interested in. Another thing that you will have to do a lot is uh, writing reflection papers in which you have to explain why you tackled an assignment in a certain way, uh, what you think went well, what could be improved next time, what would you do differently, etc. Uh, the reason why this is, is that you reflect on your study process. So you don't just learn and do the things you need to do just for passing the grade and that's it. No, uh, we really try to make you think indeed um, how you can apply what you learn and that you know why you're learning certain things and how you can use them later on in life. I'm not going to lie, I was a student as well. I found it quite boring to write all these reflection papers um, because it's always an extra step that you have to complete. However, looking back now, I graduated three years ago. Uh, these reflection papers are a great way to kind of find out what your strengths and weaknesses are, how you can keep improving yourself. And for me personally, it really helped me in finding out what I was good at, what I wanted to learn more about, and it really helped me develop a career path for later. Uh, in the Netherlands, we grade on a one to 10 scale, where five and a half is a passing grade. Uh, you will have two research opportunities for every exam. So if you don't pass it all at once, no worries, you can just take it again. This is also a reflection a little bit of Dutch culture. We believe that failure is not necessarily something bad, rather it's a process that helps you grow as a person as well. Uh, the main message that we want you to get from this slide and this part of the presentation is that planning is key. So let's go a little bit more into that. Anna, can you explain us a little bit about how the schedule works and how you plan your study load? Yes, of course, Inge. Actually, this is a very important point because indeed you have to plan, you have to schedule, you have to be timely and efficient to succeed. But this is actually like that in the professional setting. So you get ready for that already while studying. Uh, but here you can see the study load examples for international communication. This is uh, an example for one week. Usually you study for five days a week. And as you can see, there are not so many lectures each day. So you have a lot of spare time. For example, you can do something for yourself or a lot of students actually work part time. But also do not forget that this time is given most for self studies, because in the free time you will read literature, do extra project group work, homework, or some other assignments that you have to complete. Therefore, I would advise you to organize your time efficiently. For example, keep a schedule or plan things or write it down in your notes. And in this way, you will have a good overview of what you still need to do and what has already been done. So you can move on from that. Um, also, I would advise you to do some assignments in advance when you have some free time to free up some time later, for example, during exam weeks, because usually in the end of the block, uh, when all exams are and all the assignments have to be handed in, it might get quite busy. So I would advise to 
plan for that in advance and think how you can tackle that without uh, being too immersed in work. Uh, this is actually a monthly study load for international business students, and you can see that uh, the schedule can differ per week, so don't also forget to check the schedule, keep to it, and uh, be on time in this case. All right, so let's skip ahead of in time a little bit. Let's look into the future. You're done with your studies after a lot of hard work. You will get a diploma, of course, but what is also really nice about studying at Hanse is that you will have already gained a lot of work experience, which will help you land a job after graduation. So let's see how that works. And I'll tell you a little bit about how this worked for me, from my personal experience. And afterwards, I will again ask Anna to tell you guys about her experience so far. So at Hanse, you'll get the freedom to design your studies as you want to. You will have a complete year, which is usually the third year, during which you will be away from your regular pro program at Hanse, doing first an internship and a minor or an exchange period. And in this way, you can develop yourself exactly as you want to and shape your future career in this way. Uh, so as I mentioned, most bachelor programs include an internship. This internship is really integrated into the programs. You get to apply the knowledge that you've learned so far. And when you get back to Hansa afterwards, you can build on the practical knowledge you've gained during your internship. And these are real work experiences. That means you're not the one getting coffee or just printing papers. You are really treated as a real employee in this company. And you're also expected to meet that level. You will learn a lot from this experience, I can tell you. And you will be able to make meaningful connections for your career after graduation. Maybe some students even get offered a job uh, at the company they did their internship at. Next up is the minor period. During this semester, you can take 30 ECTS of courses to either deepen or broaden your knowledge in a certain subject or to dive into a certain topic that you're interested in. You can also do this abroad and that's what I did. I've always been very interested in the Spanish language, the Spanish culture, the way of living. And that's why for my minor, I decided to study abroad in Spain, in Malaga. Uh, there I could choose my own classes. So I chose subjects which I was interested in, but which my regular program did not include, such as tourism, for example. And of course, I learned Spanish. I ended up living in Spain for a year and now I can speak Spanish fluently because I went to university, I made Spanish friends, I volunteered, and it was an experience that really enriched me personally as well as professionally. And something I can really recommend you guys is to use this free space that you have within your program to really think, okay, what do I want to develop myself in that is not necessarily related maybe to what I study, but what I really want to do in the future and use that space because the opportunities are really endless. Then at the end of the last year of your studies, you will do a graduation project. Uh, for most students, this means that they carry out research for an external client or a company. And there they take on the role of a consultant. This also happens for master's programs. And these working experiences are very valuable. And it's not rare to, for students to be offered a job at the end of the graduation project as well. Because you really have the opportunity there to show your skills and to network, of course. So bottom line, make sure to make this freedom of choice count and choose what you want to do for your minor internship and graduation wisely because in this way you will graduate with already two semesters of working experience on your cv and grown competences all during your studies which of course makes you a very interesting candidate for any employer so anna what about you you're a second year student i believe and so you haven't done your internship or your minor yet, but I know that you're doing things alongside and during your studies that also help you build your CV. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, yes, of course. It is actually possible to de develop your career even before you get, uh, get some uh, opportunity to uh, do your internship or do a minor or a graduation project. Actually, you can do that from the very beginning, even from the first year, which uh, I try to do. So first, of course, doing projects with real clients really helps with uh, building your professional competencies, because there you get the opportunity to show your skills, your creativity, hoping to impress your clients as a professional. This may lead to future contact and even potential job offers, for example, for internships. 
And speaking about contacts, it is also very important to develop your network. First of all, it would be handy to try to go out there and meet more people. For example, participate in events that Hansa also organizes, such as guest lectures, uh, open days, and uh, a lot of other things, which are very fun and exciting. Here you can talk to other students, professors, and professionals in your field and make those very important business connections. Also, don't forget to make a profile in LinkedIn and connect to all the people you got to know. This website is a great tool for connections and sometimes your contacts can recommend you so you would increase your chances to get a job. I became a student ambassador actually exactly through my network. I visited a lot of events, met many people, and with some of them participating in my projects, they appreciated my skills enough to offer me a job. So this is really, really helpful for the CV since you can already get some working experience in the beginning. Thank you so much, Anna. All right, so obviously studying abroad is not only about studying. It's a major part, but not the only thing. It's also about experiencing a different city and a different culture. And you will spend a lot of time in the city where you choose to study abroad. So we really advise you to find out everything there is to know about the destination and to evaluate it carefully because one place might be right for this person and another for another, of course. Find a city that fits your personality, your lifestyle and your values. Uh, without further ado, uh, it's high time that I tell you about the city of Groningen. Groningen might be uh, challenging to pronounce for some people. Try to say it a little bit in your head, Groningen. Uh, it's often referred to as the best student city of the Netherlands, and we're very happy to tell you why that is. Uh, so in terms of the number of inhabitants of the city, Groningen may seem pretty small, but in the Netherlands, which is also a small country, this is definitely a city. In fact, with so many st students living in the city, about one out of four inhabitants is a student. And Groningen has been named the best stud student city of the Netherlands for its safety, the quality of air and water, but also definitely for its facilities, because this city, believe me, is a true student's playground. There's a lot of student associations, events organized for students, restaurants, bars, but this is not all. What I really like about Groningen as well is that it offers you anything you can wish for, for you to develop yourself in a certain area. You can be who you want to be here. There's a big offer of sports facilities, a big cultural offer in the city, arts, museums, music festivals, or if you want to develop some skills, you can take classes for students, for example, in drama, musicals, improved comedy. Groningen is probably one of the most vibrant cities that you'll ever encounter. So I'd say that it definitely deserves its title as best student city. Everything in the city is also easily accessible as well. Just hop on your bike, of course, we're in the Netherlands after all, and you'll have reached the opposite part of, of the city in approximately 15 to 20 minutes. If you're not fond of biking, of course, there's still people who don't like to bike, that's fine. You can also just take a relaxing walk or use the public transport system and you'll be in the other part of the city in no time. Uh, Groningen is not just a great city on its own, but it's also a great place from which to explore the rest of the Netherlands and even Europe. Uh, the city has its own airport as well, with chartered flights to various destinations around Europe. Next to that, the airports of Amsterdam, Bremen and Eindhoven are also within easy reach. And what I can definitely recommend you to do is to uh, consider going to Paris or to London for weekend trips, because you can be there quite easily. So those of you, I think there were three people in the beginning who have ever been to the Netherlands. You might have visited a Dutch city like Amsterdam, for example. And when you see this picture, you'll probably see similarities, such as the amount of canals. Uh, what I do like about Groningen is that it's a lot less touristy and that makes it easier to feel right at home. Uh, this picture, this is definitely the kind of uh, typical Dutch and stunning architecture that you'll find all around the city center. And look at the amount of bikes already in this picture. It really is the most common way of transportation. And I'm Dutch, so I might be a little bit uh, privileged in this way, but it's pretty fun too. Anna, you like to bike too, right? Yeah, personally, I like it. I didn't expect to because at first I was really unsure with all that thing, but I got really into it because it's not only a very easy way to move around the city, but it's actually great for your health. So I would recommend everyone to get a bike. Absolutely. Great advice. <laughs> 
So let's also check what Groningen is like outside of the city center. Uh, this scenery that you see on this picture is actually located very close to Canthus, this spot which has beautifully colored houses right next to the, to the water, was actually awarded the most Instagrammable spot of the Netherlands just a few years ago. And if you want to go truly Dutch, hop on a boat and just explore the area. And now that we're talking about truly Dutch, hop on your bike and in just 15 minutes of cycling out of the city, you'll encounter this idyllic image, countryside, windmills, you can undertake these kind of activities either with a group of friends, but also alone if you just want to relax a little bit and take it easy. The Netherlands is very safe. You can do these kind of activities on your own. When I was in high school, I cycled two hours every day from my village to Groningen, and I never felt unsafe, even as a child. I can promise you, even in the dark, you can cycle here as well. Then, we saw in the beginning that some people were doing sports as well. So Anna, can you tell us a little bit about the sports offer in Groningen? Yeah, actually sports is one of another great things that you can do in Groningen. Uh, personally, I love swimming and I've been practicing it my whole life. So I started looking for sports centers right away when I arrived in Groningen. And I found a perfect swimming pool, which you can see in the picture, right at the campus. It's part of ACLO, which is a sports organization for students in Groningen, and it offers more than 60 sports. Apart from basketball and tennis, you can also practice esports, gliding, and even underwater hockey. So it is great to try out because you have a lot of possibilities and you can basically do anything that you want. And the subscription for a year is also very student friendly. It costs slightly less than 60 euros for one academic year. Uh, Inge, and what other organizations can you try out in Groningen? Yeah, we've already mentioned a lot, uh, but I've mentioned a few of them on the slide, a few organizations that I'd like to highlight for you. Maybe you can already look into them a little bit today after watching this webinar and in this way, explore student life in Groningen a little bit from your comfort of your own home. So first of all, ESN. ESN stands for Erasmus Student Network, and it is an international student organization which offers a lot of different activities for international students. Think of parties, but also language exchanges, dinner clubs, trips to various places in the Netherlands, but also volunteering activities during which you, for example, visit a local elementary school and tell local children about what your country is really like. Uh, they also organize uh, an introduction week at the beginning of each semester during which you can meet other international students and kick off your studies in Groningen. Next up is Here and Now. Here and Now is basically an event calendar which lists all cultural and social events taking place in and around Groningen which are interesting for international students. This literally goes from music festivals to theater to museum expositions or yoga. And it might be interesting to already check this out a little bit. So you have a little bit of an idea of what kind of stuff is going on in Groningen. Then we have Groningen.nl. Groningen.nl is a digital hub where you can find all kinds of information about moving to Groningen, experiences from people who move to Groningen and what it's really like to live in the city. Then last but not least, we have City Central. City Central is an organization aimed at helping internationals integrate into the local culture. They have several initiatives you can sign up for to be paired to a local, either to get to know the city or to practice your Dutch. Uh, because everyone in the Netherlands speaks English, you'll find that, but it's always nice to just know a few sentences in Dutch, just so that in the supermarket, when you're looking for something and you want to ask about it, you know what to say, or, you know, it's always nice to show a little bit of an interest into the local culture by speaking a few words, even if it's just through Duolingo, which is great in my opinion. Um, next to that, uh, City Central also organizes small scale events, network sessions, as well as bicycle lessons. So if you're not too comfortable riding your bike yet, don't worry, you can learn it here as well. So, uh, Anna, what other kinds of stuff do you like to do in Groningen? Uh, well, now that you just mentioned these organizations, first I want to say that unfortunately I'm not involved, but I would personally love to because there is so much interesting stuff going on. But for now, I like to explore Groningen on my own 
or with my friends. For example, even walking around the city, uh, it gives you so much inspiration because it is so beautiful with all old architecture, which meets also new buildings, which are ultra modern and they have a clean look. So personally, I also love going to museums and there are multiple museums in Groningen from modern art to uh, craftsmanship, for example. So you can really find something which would be your cup of tea. And also there are lots of cozy places like really nice cafes on quiet streets where you can sit and enjoy a cup of tea or coffee or even meet up with your project group and study. And another place which I really, really like is the Forum Groningen. It's a beautiful multimedia center with multiple exhibitions and cinema going on, uh, which is located right in the city center. So if you go up there, you can actually enjoy a stunning view of uh, the Grotemarkt, which is the main square in Groningen, and other interesting landmarks. But also in the Forum Groningen, there are very nice uh, study spaces. Some of them are actually super quiet, so you can just read some literature, prepare for exams, or work in the project as well. Um, but uh, also now, when we've talked about how it feels to live in Groningen, let's maybe discuss how much that costs. Living expenses, after all, are one of the most important aspects of studying abroad. Overall, from what you can see on this slide, monthly costs of living start from 75... Uh, uh, 75, 750, I'm so sorry, uh, 750 euros a month, but that depends on your lifestyle, of course. Generally, you would have the following expenses, housing, insurance, groceries, and of course, additional fees. For housing, there are usually two options. You can either live in a student house or look for a place on the private market. Student rooms are usually less expensive, starting from 350 a month, while private facilities are pricier, starting from, for example, 700 euros. For me, it's around the same since I rent an apartment with a friend on the private market. Which is what is also important to know about housing is that finding a place might be really challenging because there are a lot of students who are looking for rooms and studios, so you have to be proactive and start looking early. After searching in February and March, I booked my apartment in the beginning of April, stating that I'll actually come to the Netherlands only in August. So start searching for an apartment, usually in early spring, and you will get the best deals. The booking process is actually organized really nicely. Landlords usually put a lot of photos on the website, and you can also do viewings online. Insurance policies, of course, can cost differently. For some Dutch students, for example, they are 80 euros per month. As for groceries, this also depends on your lifestyle, but they can cost around 150 a month. Additional costs such as clothing, transport and going out can take up to 200 euros. But still, living in Groningen is much less expensive than living in larger cities such as Amsterdam, which is also great. Also, there are quite a few possibilities to save money in Groningen. Firstly, I would advise to write down your budget. You will be able to track your expenses and decide what to cut down on, maybe. Also, check out the sales in shops and supermarkets, because there are a lot of deals going on everywhere. And for groceries, such as vegetables, fruit and bread, for example, go to the market, which is held in the center three times a week. There you will get the freshest quality food for much less. And now I'll give you, uh, I'll give Inge the floor so she could tell you a bit about practical matters uh, regarding applications. Yes, thank you so much, Anna. The last tip that Anna gave about the market in Groningen, really a pro tip. It's the best way to save on groceries, especially if you go at the end of the day. But remember that for where you come here. So I hope we shared sufficient information for you to have a good idea of what studying at Hansa really entails. So I'll round off by quickly addressing some practical matters. We've already been talking for quite long, so I won't go too much in depth here, as all this information is also available on our website, of course. Or you can answer, uh, ask us any question anytime, we'll help you out. Uh, you can already apply to study with us in the next academic year. Uh, as an EU student, the application deadline for most programs is the 15th of August. Uh, there might be some non-EU students here in the audience as well. For you, it's important to know that the deadline is on the 1st of June, so a bit earlier due to immigration requirements. 
Uh, there are differences for our physiotherapy program, physiotherapy program, sorry, uh, where a selection procedure is in place, as well as for arts and music programs, we have auditions, and for some of our masters as well. So make sure you check the website for additional details. Uh, you have to hand in certain documents that are listed here, and students from most countries will have to provide a sufficient IELTS score to prove your level of English. So then how do you apply? All application in the Netherlands for higher education goes through a national system called StudyLink. You will first submit your application there, and then you will receive an email from Hansa asking you to submit the required documents. And then as soon as you submitted everything, you will usually receive your results and letter of acceptance in about two weeks. The application process is quite easy and straightforward. And on our website, you will also find a video in which we visualize and explain the process in more detail. On this slide, you can see the tuition fees. Uh, if you apply for a bachelor's program for the first year, you only have to pay half of the normal tuition fee. So only around 1000 euros. For the consecutive years, the tuition fee is a bit more than 2000 and this uh, amount rises slightly with like 30 euros or so each year. Uh, some of our master's programs have different fees, so make sure to check our website to assure yourself that the tuition fees for your preferred program are as you think they are. Um, there are also different tuition fees for non-EU students, and you can find all about it on our website. Uh, if you want, you can also pay in portions, so you don't have to pay everything at once. And if you have an EU nationality, you may be able to receive study financing from the Dutch government. One of the rules for that, for being eligible, is that you have to have a part-time job next to your studies of at least 56 hours a month. Quite some students do this. A lot of students actually work alongside their studies just to gain a little bit more money. And you can find out more information and see if you're eligible by following this link. So that's it for the main presentation. Uh, make sure to stick around for the Q&A and to follow us, of course, on our social media pages. You can scan the QR code to go immediately to our Instagram page, but we're also new on TikTok, so make sure to follow us there. Uh, we share a lot of useful content on our socials, ranging from information about study programs, upcoming events, practical matters, and so on. And we also have a Q&A Friday each Friday every week, so you can also ask us any question you may have there, because we would love to stay in touch, of course. Uh, one last thing before I shut up is that I'd like to draw your attention to is that on the 10th of December, we will host an online open day. And this event is the perfect opportunity for you to really dive into your study program that you want to know more about, to talk to teachers and students and really find out if Hansa is the right fit for you. So stay tuned, registrations will open soon and I really hope to see you all there as well. So that's it from us. Before we go to the Q&A, make sure that you can contact us anytime, also after today, through social media, email, WhatsApp, you name it. So back to Federica. Thank you. Thank you, Inge. Thank you, Anna, for your presentation. And I also like to thank you, Katarina, because she was great answering all of the questions. Uh, there is one, actually, to Hannah. So they're asking, where are you from? And how did you find moving to the Netherlands? And actually, they're also asking, what are you planning to do next? Not sure if you already have something in your mind, but if you do, please share it with us. Well, uh, of course, relating to the last question that you asked, unfortunately for now, I have no idea. But I think it's okay because uh, I still have a few years to tap into my skills, my interests and try out what I like to do, what I don't like to do. So uh, I would be able to see uh, whether I would like to work in a certain profession in communication and also decide uh, where I want to go abroad for studies and an internship. As for the first part of the question, uh, well, I come from Moscow, uh, from Russia, and that's uh, quite uh, far away <laughs> from the Netherlands. And uh, that's why you might be quite surprised for why I chose to study here. Um, but actually, I really like that in the Netherlands, there are so many programs which are taught in English, because I really wanted to do my studies in a foreign language so I could learn it better and get a broader experience. Um, and well, as I mentioned, in the Netherlands, uh, there is a lot to choose from. And Hansa was uh, actually one of the best uh, options for me uh, in terms of the program itself, because I've never seen anything that interesting as international communication 
at Hanste, since this program involves a lot of broad subjects and you can really see the profession as a whole, not just look into some specific areas. But also what I like about Hanse is that it's a University of Applied Sciences, of course, as we mentioned, because I really wanted to graduate with work experience already. Uh, so I would know what I'm doing and I would have better chances at finding a, a job. So this is why I applied here. And uh, so far, I think that I love it. Wow, this is great. I actually wanted to take the opportunity to have you both here to ask the question. So someone was asking if you need to know Dutch to get a job while studying. Elisa was asking. I know Ekaterina already gave us some insight, but maybe I wanted to hear from your experience. Um, well, uh, as you know, uh, I'm not from the Netherlands, so uh, unfortunately I don't speak Dutch. I just know two three phrases for now but i'm getting there i promise <laughs> but uh, actually it is not necessary to know dutch for uh, some jobs for example since i work as a student ambassador i'm mostly in contact with international students so of course my main language for that is english but a lot of our students are actually working in um, retail or in uh, something related to food for example even on campus so there you can also speak english um, but I would advise you to uh, learn Dutch after all, uh, if you're planning to stay in the Netherlands and uh, find the, a full time job, uh, because, of course, you can work in international companies, but it is better to know the language of the country that you're living in just culture wise and also because it will give you more opportunities and you will be able to learn more about your job and about the Netherlands in general. Thank you. Some people were also a little bit worried about if there is like a test, a te an exam to enter. Because we already uh, explained that only a few courses, but maybe Inge, if you want to say something about this, because I understand it's something that could be worrying. Yeah, I can imagine, definitely. Uh, this indeed uh, varies per course. So for example, the physiotherapy bachelor's program, they have an uh, entry exam. And uh, after that exam, you get a ranking and only the first, I believe 250 then can enter the program. Uh, but for most of the programs, um, as long as you meet the admission requirements, which have to do with having studied, for example, uh, mathematics in high school, and um, then uh, you will just be admitted into the program. However, uh, you always, uh, basically every international student with some exceptions have to do an IELTS test or a Cambridge or a TOEFL or another equivalent of that. Um, what's good to know, I would say is that, uh, as I said, for most programs, it's not that difficult to enter the university as long as you meet, uh, meet the requirements, but then it starts in the first year. Then you're really you know, uh, expected to step up immediately uh, to really do your best and really study because you have to gain 48 credits in the first year. And if you don't have that, then you have to leave the program. So I would say, you know, maybe the getting in is not that difficult, but then your entry exam basically starts once you enter the program, because that's when you're really uh, required to step up your game. Thank you. Uh, Dorian is asking us scholarships. So you mentioned that there are some scholarships available. How hard is to get a scholarship from the Dutch government? And even if we don't get it, how hard do you consider it to study abroad when money is a certain issue? Mm -hmm. So uh, regarding scholarships, uh, we unfortunately don't offer as Hans scholarships for EU students, only for non-EU students. Uh, the grant that I uh, mentioned is indeed offered by the Dutch government. I will see maybe if I can go back to that slide quickly. Yeah, uh, for that one, indeed, you have to meet the requirements that they set, of which the most important one is that you have a part-time job of 56 hours a week. As long as you have that and you meet the other requirements, you will automatically be eligible for receiving the grant. Maybe make a picture of this slide so you can, uh, because the link is not that easy to remember. Uh, so you can look it up because there you can see all the eligibilities uh, for receiving this grant. Um, besides that, Anna, do you have any general comments about uh, 
working in the Netherlands, maybe? Um, well, uh, I mean, uh, I would say that it is uh, quite possible to find a job here to earn some extra money on the side. I would just advise you to be proactive and uh, tap into your networks for that because you might be surprised. Uh, a lot of your friends or professors, they can actually know where you can find a part-time job. So uh, the process will be a little bit easier for you in this regard. But also, I believe uh, there was another part of the question with like uh, a bit of budgeting tips as well. Yes. Uh, uh, maybe also I can uh, refer back to that a little bit. Um, as we mentioned before, it, it really is possible to um, uh, keep budgeting here. Um, so uh, as Ine also uh, said, um, you can... Uh, cut costs on groceries if you buy them on the market, for example. And um, really in uh, some shops here, uh, the products are generally very cheap, but uh, of very good quality. For example, there is the shop called Lidl. Um, so I would advise to uh, frequent those places and maybe um, then not go that much into other supermarkets because sometimes that might be a bit pricier. Um, but um, otherwise, uh, I would just say, uh, keep a lookout for some nice deals and sales and you'll be good to go. Perfect. Someone was asking about hockey team, but Ekaterina was great. She already says, yes, there is a hockey team, so great. I wanted um, to ask, um, asking about if with the diploma, if someone can work in the EU, just not in Dutch. So if someone with a diploma can work with your English. I'm sorry, I didn't exactly get the question can you repeat? I think if someone with this diploma so if someone comes and I guess graduate I mean we're talking about bachelor and master so mm -hmm. just to clarify can work in the EU not just in Dutch so in a case someone wants to go back I guess and work in their own country absolutely absolutely you will get an internationally recognized degree so that's either a bachelor of arts a bachelor of science a bachelor of business administration or a master's of course and yeah with that degree you can basically work anywhere in the world because the same degree counts thank you um application i mean you said a lot about how to apply and of course the webinar is recorded so we will be sharing with you the recording I wanted to hear from you both. I mean, Inge, you are an alumna, Hannah, you, you're studying there. Do you have any tips or, I don't know, some common mistakes that you suggest to, you know, avoid or maybe, you know, you know that are actually could jeopardize um, an application? If you can tell us a little bit. I wouldn't necessarily say jeopardize your application, but it's just very important to really check per program what do they need there, what kind of requirements are there. For example, as I said, for certain programs, you need mathematics. If you don't have mathematics, then it's basically impossible to get in. So those kind of things are really important to know. And there's always a list of the things that you need to have. Uh, just to make sure to hand in everything at once, otherwise our admission department will contact you and it will, you know, delay your whole application. So it's better to just always check in advance what you need, make sure that you provide your documents in a nice and orderly manner. Uh, of course, for our arts programs, for example, you will need a portfolio. For that one, we also recommend to spend a lot of time on that because the program can be quite competitive and only the best ones will be admitted, of course, to the Minerva Art Academy. So just make sure that you know what the requirements are and you know what to do to meet them. Uh, and of course, we also have uh, student ambassadors such as Anna, who can always uh, be happy to ask any question that you have about that as well. Thank you. And Hannah, any advice that you feel like giving? regarding this? Uh, well, I mean, in this case, uh, I would totally agree with Ine, uh, because you really have to look into the requirements, really read into it, spend time uh, for that. Don't just skim through, because sometimes there are things that you can miss. So um, just uh, be really in-depth when you are doing this, and I'm sure you will be fine, because as long as you meet the requirements, as long as you know what you need to submit, you'll be good to go. Perfect. Um, all, does all program have the English lecture option or do you have some courses only given in Dutch? 
Yeah, we have quite some uh, courses only offered in Dutch, of course, because we also have a lot of Dutch students uh, studying in the university. But all of the programs that I mentioned before on the slide, I can go back to it quickly. Uh, to the bachelor's programs, give me a second. All those are um, given in English. Perfect. Also on the website, you find all oh, this course. information, take screenshots, as that would be interesting. Yeah. Great. So in case someone is already asking about transferring credits, it could be possible. So again, I guess it varies from case by case. Mm -hmm. Coming towards the end of our presentation, I wanted to ask Inge or Anna if there was anything else that they wanted to add. Of course, it's very hard to summarize this in a, in a webinar. Um, 10th of December, you mentioned there is an open day, so definitely it's a good opportunity for you to find that even more. But I wanted to ask you to if there was anything else that you wanted to share with us today. I would say my main advice for everyone watching is just to do your research. We've presented a lot about Hanze, but of course uh, it's up to you to see whether our university, our programs fit what you need to do. So make sure to read into the city of Groningen, make sure to visit our open day indeed, as we mentioned, as that is those kind of activities, talk to students are the best way to find out whether indeed Hanze is a good fit for you and the other way around. Um, yeah, in this case, I would also agree with Ine because uh, getting as much information as possible would benefit you greatly because then you would know what you're getting into and whether this is fit for you or not. And also what uh, Ine said about uh, chatting with students, we actually have the possibility to do that. On our website, you can find chats with current students from a variety of programs. So you can actually get first-hand experience and um, ask all the questions that might interest you, for example, content-wise or just the atmosphere um, of studying. So don't miss out on that. And also there is an opportunity to do that uh, if you interact with us in our social media, because of course uh, our social media team, our student ambassadors will be really happy to answer all your questions and guide you in the process and help you in any way possible. Thank you. Really, I wanted to thank Inge and Hannah for their presentation. Uh, maybe, Anna, if you want to, if you want to put the slides on your social media, so um, you can follow the university and you know, you mentioned Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. So there is a lot of way to keep in contact, and I think it's great to also hear from students what what is like. So. As you can see, they are available to answer all the questions that you might have. We will be sharing with you uh, the recording of the event. You will receive an email from us with some deadlines, some, you know, for sure, or any extra information. So um, watch your inbox because we will be sending to you over the next few days. And I also wanted to tell whoever was interested in receiving a certificate of attendance, we're just going to share with you a link that if you can fill in, just leave us your feedback and you receive your form. Again, thank you so much, Inge, Anna, Ekaterina, and all of you for being connected. Lots of questions and it's great to see, you know, all of this interest. We will also share with you an email address that you can uh, you can address any further question that you might have from today onwards. So really, thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you at the next live webinar of Hansi University of Applied Sciences. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend, you everyone. Too. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Have a nice weekend. Bye.